Hello and welcome to 15 Minute Game. My name is Tony and don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button for more videos. Hey guys, in today's video we're going to talk all about the RSI Mantis. Hey guys, what's up? It's me Tony and welcome to a Star Citizen Ship Guide. In this continuing series, I'll take you through all the important stats that you need to know if you're thinking of buying. Then we'll take a tour inside and out, followed by the all-important test drive. Don't forget, if you're thinking of picking up this game, if you use the link in the description below, you'll get 5,000 starting credits. So without further ado, let's crack straight into it. The RSI Mantis is a single-seat induction ship capable of pulling targets out of quantum travel using quantum enforcement. Lightly armed and armoured, the Mantis is designed to work in tandem with more heavily armed law enforcement or pirates to confront the captured ships. Right, let's check out them all-important stats. Manufacturer, Robert Space Industries or RSI. Role, interdiction, size, small. Crew, one. Cargo capacity of nil, but it can carry some boxes. Production state, flight ready. Pledge, cost, 150 US dollars. Original, 150 US dollars. Availability, time limited sales. Specifications, length, 30. Beam, 17. Height, 8. Combat speed 170, max speed 1222. Maneuvering pitch max 62 degrees, your max 64 degrees, roll max 175 degrees. Weapons and damage, it has two times size 3 laser cannons which do 375 DPS each. Missiles, it has two times size 2 dominators which do 778 per 2. Two times S2 ignite 2s, 7388 per 2. It also has a quantum enforcement drive, its DPS is 690. Overall damage is 1576. And its HP is 6,801. Now on to the comparison. What I've done for this is selected niche ships. Because the Mantis is niche in what it can do and stuff like that. So I put it against some others. So I selected the Warlock, which is like an EMP. Hornet Tracker, which strangely enough tracks things. And the Herald, which is a data runner. So for me, three other ships there that kind of fit into that niche category. Because they're all ones that you'd buy for a certain reason rather than like something to do something overall so let's have a look max speed the mantis comes in at one two two zero which places it in third the winner is the herald scm of 168 it puts it last the winner is the tracker max your slash pitch the winner is the mantis at 64 hull hp the winner is the tracker the Mantis comes in second with 6,801. Shields of 10,800 and smashes the competition and comes in first. DPS of 745, which puts it in second. The Warlock wins that one. Damage, it comes in at 15,175. It comes in third. The Tracker wins that one. Cargo, none of them have cargo, so they all come last on that one or first, whichever way you look at it. And Quantum Range, it basically comes very last here with 31 and fourth it's one of the things they put in place to stop it being overpowered and basically it's got half the jump range of any other ship it's 31 is terrible you wouldn't get anywhere you'd have to refuel like a hundred times to get anywhere so overall the winner was the tracker out of them four ships right now that you know all the important stats it's time to have a look around inside and take it for a bit of a flight so first thing you'll notice is this ship is gorgeous. I think, and I'm just putting it out there, it's probably my top, in the top three of my favourite looking ships in the game. The Banu Defender still wins that for me. The Banu Defender, I don't think anything can beat that that I know of. But this thing is really good looking. And the reason for this is around the side. It's because it looks like something from Star Trek. I wish it was bigger, like a big or medium ship. And it looked a lot more Star Trek-y because this is the most Star Trek-y looking ship we have. Apart from possibly the Pisces in the game. First thing you'll notice, this big open glass cockpit. It gives you such a good view inside as well. You can see all around there's no struts blocking you kind of like you know the um constellation series they have big cockpits but the struts in the way so you can't really see this doesn't have anything like that um at the front you'll notice the two repeaters 
two laser repeaters there. The missiles are kept up here. So I zoom in, you can just see them sticking out. Around the side, it's the same on both sides, so there's not too much else to show. Around the sides, and there you go, there's your nacelles, which I just think look awesome. As I said, I just wish they were maybe a little bit bigger. And also, they don't do anything. I was kind of hoping that when you're in landing mode, they might fall down or something to give it a bit of movement when you're going. But, no, it doesn't. It just stays there. Back end, I'll put my torch on so you can see a little bit better. Again, just looks so sleek and, oh yeah, I love it from the back as well. And then on the side, it's the exact same as the other profile. You might be wondering, how do you get in this thing? <laughs> now, it does, it's, it sounds weird, but this thing looks, it's like a TARDIS. It looks bigger on the inside than it does on the outside. And you get in via under here. And it is a very strange design choice, and it's not one I like. I would have liked to have seen ladders or doors on the side. Because this thing isn't the best. You can see how far it is off the ground. If you misplace your ship in any way, you might struggle to get back in your ship. Because there's not much room for manoeuvre. And it doesn't hit the ground. So usually you've got to jump up to it. So I don't know why they've done that. I would like to see that come down a little bit more. And there's not too many issues I have with this ship space-wise. But look. Just normal jumping. You can see it takes a few. And then you'll find the button here. Call it up. And you jump inside. See what I mean about looking bigger inside? It, it looks really big inside. And they've maximized the room really good. You have a bed on this side. On this side you have some, you know, component-y stuff and computer screens. The computer screens are a bit of an angle. Like, you'd have to kind of crouch <laughs> to see them. You'd have to be like, what does the screen say, Captain? I don't know. I just have to crouch. Oh, yeah, that's what it says. Um, so, yeah, yeah, I kind of have to crouch down to see them. On this side, you have a coffee pot. On this side, you have the restroom. However, for some reason, the way they made it, like, I know it's nice to have it. There's no shower component. component. And also, if you were sitting on the toilet and accidentally closed the door, you would have no legs. <laughs> but... They have maximized space in here, and I do like that design. You can carry boxes in here, no problems. Um, and you'd still be able to walk around. And also, if you need to fix anything, you can be straight to that fixing. There's no messing around. There's nothing blocking your way to get stuck on. you just straight in and through. I was wondering where that was. It looked weird there with the smoke. Cockpit-wise, there's no um, displays or physical things there. Kind of like a lot of the... MSI, MSI, RSI, I was thinking of the MSI uh, computer components there, RSI stuff, you know, again, like the Connie series, so we're just going to jump in the seat, when you go in, it'll swivel around and move forward, like that, and then your displays are on these screens here, and just look at that view all around, you get such a cracking view from this thing, and we'll power it on, make a flight ready, and here's all your screens lighting up, And what we'll do is we will take off. take off. So we'll just go up here a little bit just so we don't get stored. Actually, let's move back a little bit. Hopefully there's no one behind me. Um, so yeah, I think when you press the button to bring that in, then the cells should change. But they don't stay where they are, which is a bit of a shame. So what I'm going to do is just fly over here. We're going to get out of the armistice zone. Quite way out, in fact. Because there's one feature of this ship I haven't shown you, and that's the quantum enforcement interdiction. So, let's keep going a little bit, because it is actually against the rules law of the game that you can't do that besides space stations as a green zone. So I don't want the space purples after me, you know. I kind of want to get away a little bit before we do anything. How far are we away? Uh, let's keep going a little bit further. But just look at this ship. Look at it. How gorgeous it is. Such a nice looking ship. And I don't like review these ships in the terms of I think you should buy it, I think you shouldn't buy it, this, that. But this one to me is so niche. And the fact you would have to have a ship to back you up that I'm not too sure it exists to do anything. For me, it's, I don't know, for a single player, pointless. Because when you fire your uh, snare device, you lose all your power. So once you've lost all your power, you can't then fight back. 
So there's a little bit of a problem then. I'm going to show you the how to open this thing. See, look down here. Click on that button. Turn it on. And just look at... I mean, can you get any more, like... Oh, it's just incredible, isn't it? Look at it. And there's your quantum snare device. That's why you lose a lot of room in this ship, because that's got to be contained. But, oh, isn't that incredible? And I'll show you it closing again. So we'll just look down here. We'll press here. And we'll just close it up. Isn't that incredible? <laughs> so, yeah, we'll open it up again. And we've got the quantum dampener and the snare charge. So the dampener will stop people jumping away. The snare will bring them out of it. So we'll just fire it. So we're charging it now. Look how cool that is. I'm not even talking. There's no need to talk. Because <laughs> it just looks incredible. Oh, I don't get a crime stat from this. Please don't give me a crime stat. And what this will do is anyone passing me in quantum will be bought out of quantum. Oh, God. <laughs> I committed. No. I go to prison. <laughs> oh, I didn't give me a crime stat. Good. I've been fine though. So what that would have done is anyone passing within this area would have been bought out of quantum. So that's what this does. The unfortunate thing is I'm now out of power and I wouldn't be able to fire any weapons or anything for too long. And it has an awfully long queue time, um, cooldown as well. Like ages. And if we jump quantum fuel, so we'll be able to get around. Um, but if I select, say, Crusader, set route, can't even get Crusader. Can I get Microtech? Nope, not a chance. Can I get Art Corp? Um, do you want to actually select Art Corp or do you want to just be annoying? Get Art Corp. So that's, it's the disinvise isn't that far. You can't get that far. That's another one of the problems with this as well. Look, cooldown is still good. I don't think I actually hit anyone. <laughs> However, I have read... That apparently it's four seconds. You have a four second window to get someone out of quantum. So for me, the only thing you've really got for this ship is you would have to use it in conjunction with something else. So you would need someone with you who's got a fighter or a bigger ship that can protect you. And then you can use this to get bounties to stop them getting away and stuff like that. So yeah, anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. That is the tour of the RSI Mantis inside and out. And um, we've got all the stats now, and I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll catch you all later. Goodbye.